Analyzing bank or credit card statements can be tough. We come into Excel looking like this, and it's hard to search through this to find recurring expenses. Today, I'm gonna walk you step-by-step -step through some Excel tools that help you find recurring expenses in messy bank and credit card statements. And before we go any further, let me know in the comments, what else can I help you with in Excel? Make sure to like and subscribe as well, and let's get started right now. So the first step is to pull the data in from your bank or credit card provider. So here I am in my Chase account, and when I click over here on more and I go to spending report, that's gonna take me to the section that I want. And it defaults to year to date spend. And to get this into Excel, I'm just gonna go over here to the download button. And I wanna CSV, so that looks good. I'm gonna click download. And you can see it downloaded in the upper right hand corner. And I'm just gonna click open file. And so here we are in the file we just exported. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these columns and just drag across. And then wait till I see this black divider and double click. That's gonna expand the column widths to fit the contents of the cells. And so the next thing we wanna do is create a table. And you're gonna see why a table will be beneficial in a little bit. So the easy way to highlight all this data is just, just press Control A. That's gonna highlight this continuous range of data. And then you can go up here to insert and press table, but you can also press Control T to insert that table. And this looks good, it's got headers and I'm gonna click okay. When that table changes formatting, you know that it worked. And so pay attention up here in table name, you'll see the table name is table one. That's gonna be helpful because we're gonna click up here in insert and click pivot table. And then the table range that we want is table one. So that looks good. And we're gonna click okay. And we just created a pivot table. And so now the first thing we're gonna do is filter out the month of August because we're looking for recurring expenses and we only want complete months. So I'm gonna take this post date, I'm gonna drag it to rows and uh-oh, I can tell that Excel is not recognizing these as dates. If it had, it would have collapsed them into months. To fix that, I'm gonna press control page down to jump back to our data. And then I'm gonna right click over here and I'm gonna insert a column to the right. And we're gonna name this column date value because we're gonna convert our dates into a format that Excel will recognize as a date. So to do that, just press equal sign, type out date value. I'm gonna arrow key down and press the tab key to auto complete it. And we're gonna select the date that we wanna convert. And when I close parentheses and press enter, you'll see the first benefit of a table is that the formulas are automatically dragged down to all the rows in the table. But you'll also see we're getting some pound value errors up top, but then we're also getting some legitimate errors down below. That's because some of these dates are formatted correctly and some are formatted incorrectly. So I'm gonna press F2 to edit this formula. Press the home key to jump over to the beginning of it. And I'm just gonna enter an if error statement. And so if this date value is an error, I'm gonna just press comma and say, include the original date here. When I close that parentheses and press enter, you'll see we get nice looking values all the way down. And then I'm gonna just copy this date and I click the menu button, press S and then R and that paste special formats. So menu S R, we'll paste that as a format. So now we've got a date value that Excel will recognize as a date. Menu button again, R, we'll refresh this. Another benefit of a table is that you don't have to tell the pivot table that you added a new field, it automatically recognizes it. So I'm gonna remove post date, bring in date value, and few. Excel is recognizing our dates as actual dates and that's great. And like I said, I wanna exclude August because we only want complete months. So I'm gonna click on this filter and just unclick August and click OK. And then I'm gonna drag this months up to filters and then drag out the remaining dates. All right, so the next step, we wanna take this description field that describes the different expenses we have and drag that to rows. And we wanna click on that description field again and drag it to values. So we count the number of instances of that description in our data. And then I'm gonna right click, go to sort and sort this largest to smallest. So you've got a list of expenses sorted by the number of times they appear in your statement. 
So some of these things with numbers like 13, 10, and 9 occur more frequently than monthly. But all of these sevens are your recurring expenses because we're looking at data from January to July. Now, one thing you'll see in here are my payments. So I'm just going to highlight those, right click, filter, and I'm going to hide those selected items because I only want expenses. You're going to notice a couple things. One is this description is formatted differently for each one and it's kind of sloppy. You've got capital letters, you've got spaces. So the first thing we're going to take care of to clean this data up is you'll notice that description is formatted. You've got a lot of spaces here. You've got all capital letters here. So let's go take care of that. Jump back to our data and insert a new column to the right. And we're just going to call this updated description. And one way to clean that up is to use the trim formula. So trim and then select that description that we want to trim and close parentheses. That's going to remove unnecessary spaces. And then I'm going to click here to the beginning and I'm going to use proper on top of that description as well. Close parentheses. And that's going to make sure to capitalize the first letter of every word and then have lowercase for every letter thereafter. And so I'm gonna press enter and you can see that's a lot cleaner than what we had originally. When I jump back to the pivot table and right click and click refresh, we've got this updated description here and I'm gonna drag that to rows and resort. You can see that looks a lot cleaner than what we had previously. But two other things jump out to me immediately. The first is Apple. And I know that there are some subscriptions in here but they only come through with this one description. And the best way to do that is actually just to go into your iPhone, go into settings, type in subscriptions. And when you click on subscriptions, Apple will show you exactly what these charges are comprised of. But a little bit more secretive is I'm gonna search for Amazon Prime, because I know I pay for Amazon Prime, but if you look, it's only showing one occurrence. And that's because Prime includes this string that prevents it from coming through the same description every single month. And so we're going to walk through how to fix that, jump back to our data, insert column to the right. And we're just going to build on our updated description, we'll call that updated description prime. I'm going to create a formula with a couple different steps. I like to press the plus sign to start a new formula. And we're going to find, in this case, we're going to find an asterisk. So open quotations, asterisk, another quotation. So we're finding that asterisk and we're going to do that within this description. And I'm going to highlight this column. I'm going to turn it into values with no decimal points. And you can see where there is an asterisk. The find formula tells you where that asterisk is positioned within the text. But where there isn't, you get a hash value error. So to overcome this, I'm going to edit this formula and I'm going to enter an if error formula. The value if there's an error is our find. And if there is an error, I'm going to say we want 100 characters. And you'll find out why in a little bit. Close parentheses and press enter. And so we're going to combine the number that we're deriving here with a left formula. So we're going to say left. And the text, the first thing you do is highlight the text you want to find the left of. And then comma for the number of characters. We're just going to include this whole string that we've already wrote. Close parentheses and press enter. And so we're almost there. As you can see, we are extracting some text from this description, but it's still including that asterisk. And so to overcome that, the last thing we want to do is update our find and include a negative one. So we're moving to the left of the asterisk one. I think we've officially isolated prime. So let's jump back to our pivot table to make sure. Right click and refresh. Bring in the updated description with the prime. Sort largest to smallest, and here we go. We've got Amazon Prime, and we're showing that it's recurring seven times. So we've successfully isolated it. So let's go through here and highlight all of the recurring payments that we identified and keep only those selected items. And then I want to make this look nicer. So I'm going to click up here in Design. I like this light blue pivot table. I'm going to go up here, I'm going to unhide grid lines, update the header to subscriptions, and then occurrence, 
and we can filter out these different payments. Now, what you're gonna get is a couple false positives saying that this is a subscription, but what it really is, is something else. And so we can just filter it out. But the reality is to get a completely clean list using Excel formulas is really hard. And what we've covered today might be sufficient for you, but I also wanna propose Rocket Money as an alternative to this activity because I've used it myself and it does a lot of this work for you. The app automatically identifies your subscriptions in your bank and credit card statements, and it lets you edit the details of this subscription and put them into different categories. So this could be a great alternative for you if you don't wanna do all of this Excel work that I just proposed. I have an affiliate link in the description, and if you downloaded the app using that link, it's a great way to give back to my channel at no extra cost to you. And while you're working on your personal budget, check out this video that shows you the best way to combine your bank and credit card data into one Excel file.